Hey guys, it's me Philip. Welcome to another tutorial. I wasn't expecting to do one so soon, but uh, after all the positive feedback, I decided, hey, what the hell, uh, let's do another one and see how it does. So today we're going to be looking at uh, creating procedural edgeware in Substance Painter. Uh, I use it to replace my ZBrush edgeware workflow. I think this is a bit more flexible. It's definitely quicker and you can just iterate and randomize it as much as you want very quickly so uh yeah let's get into it okay so we are in substance painter we will open we will click on file new we will grab our model uh we will set the document resolution to 4k we will set the normal map format to opengl at least that what works best for me in octane uh, i haven't found any official data on this but I think OpenGL is the one that should be used with Octane. If I'm wrong please do let me know in the comments below. I honestly couldn't find any info on this. Okay so we will start by grabbing basic iron raw damaged material. We, will, we can delete the default layer there. We're not gonna tweak it in any way we just want it for preview purposes. Okay we can get rid of the UVs like this. First thing we need to do is go to texture set settings, go to bake mesh maps. We need to bake the maps because Substance Painter doesn't know in real time where the edges are, so it needs to bake this information into map to be able to use it with their generators. So we will take use low poly as high poly mesh. In curvature, we will go to, for per vertex, we will disable seams. What enable seams does is curvature map will take into into account the edge uh, the edges of seams of your UV seams, which we don't want in this case. Of course, this can be useful in other cases, but not in this one. And leave the rest uh, default. A general rule of thumb with the curvature map is if it works, just leave <laughs> keep a default. If you encounter some issues, try getting around them by you know testing out different settings and see what's working for you. Okay, so the bake is now finished. So now we can start creating our edgeware. We will go back to layers, click on add fill layer. We will rename it to edgeware. And since we want to manipulate the height of our, or like the depth of our geometry, we will turn off all unnecessary channels in the fill layer which would be color, metal, rough, and normal. We don't need those, we just need height. And since we want to like dent into the surface, we will set it to minus two, minus 0.25. You know, th this will depend on the, how, on the height of the rest of your texture. But since we are gonna just deal with the edgeware, we can pretty much set it to whatever number we want. I just set it to 0.25 because if I, if you go minus one, then the preview in Substance Painter can be a bit too like crazy, and this seems to work the best. Now we will click on the layer, go add black mask. We will right click on the mask and add generator. We will click on the generator and click on metal edge wear. And we get something like this. Now, this is no good because it's just way too harsh. Uh, the edges are, you know, flattened. And like, and, and this is just not how the edgeware would, would look because it's like literally super rough and like really harsh. So we will alt click on our mask to preview it. We will go into our, our metal edgeware. We will play with the wear contrast a little bit. We will tweak the curvature weight down here. Yeah, I think this looks good. And of course we could play with the scale of our grunge, but I think the default grunge scale works quite good in our case because the sabaton would be like 35-ish centimeters long or like one foot. And this seems pretty, yeah, it seems to be pretty good. Obviously if the, you need to take into consideration the scale of your object because if you had a really tiny object, the grunge on it wouldn't be super tiny. It would be, even small dents would be pretty large. So you have to keep that in mind to get the most realistic results. 
So now we're in, we're still in our mask and we will go into right click, add filter, we'll add blur. I guess we can keep it like on the default 0.5 for now. Because what we're after is, uh, before without the blur, you can see that there is pretty jarring jump from black to white. But it, it wouldn't look like that with metal. It, it wouldn't just chip away. It would more likely like bend inwards and dent. So we need to get something smoother like this. But now if we preview the material, it's like way too soft. I mean, it could probably work in some materials. Maybe like with gold, the edges would be pretty smooth because gold is quite soft in terms of metals at least. Uh, we'll go back into our mask, right click, add filter, because we want to get some more angular edges here and there or some sharpness, so it's not all blurry as it is now. And we will get that by grabbing blur slope. We will tone it down a lot. Yeah, we can actually grab the... We can increase the intensity divider by 100, which will divide the intensity by 10 more than it was before. And we can now tweak the input because as I mentioned before we need to keep in mind the scale like this this is way too tiny for something an object of this size generally so we want to get something a bit bigger we can do that in blur slope source styling yep that looks pretty good we can uh, soften it even bit more using the blur that's in it. Well, that's maybe a bit too much. Maybe we just get rid of the blur entirely. Okay, so now this this is pretty solid base, I think. But what what we what we want is to break it up a little bit because right now it's like kind of like everywhere and quite evenly. So we will right click, add fill layer, and we will drag in some procedural noise or grunge. Now, this would depend a lot on the material that the object is made of. For instance, if you had wood, you could introduce some of that wooden streakiness uh, using directional noises, or maybe even like some tile sampled, uh, cloned uh, stripes. If you had something like concrete, you could grab something like a fractal based sum or or this uh, Perlin noise fractal or maybe BNW spots or clouds because th those would introduce more noisiness into it but the metal wouldn't be as noisy so I think we will just grab some maybe the 3D Perlin that, that looks pretty good we will also need to adjust the contrast of the Perlin noise so we get some areas which are not affected like here and some areas which are affected here so let's crank the contrast up to I don't know yeah, like something like this works scroll down and in noise parameters we can adjust the size of the noise this looks pretty good Okay, so now we have pretty basic setup, and I, I thought it, I would leave it here, but I think that it might be quite interesting to introduce a little bit more detail into this current setup. So we will grab another fill layer, and since this is metal, we would have some scratches on it. Generally, you would do the scratches kind of like all over the all, all over the object, but I thought it, it might be pretty cool to add some scratches just to the edges to create like some uh, smaller dents because right now if we turn on the, you can see that these are generally kind of like bigger shapes so we would add a little bit more detail to those we would we will scroll to scrunch scratch scratches rough and drag those into our fill layer so from the get-go we see that we need to scale this thing down so we will go to scratch tiling and go to like four we will increase the scratch width a little bit now we will increase the scratch dirtiness which creates pretty nice variation in the scratches and we can increase the dust intensity because that can introduce some additional detail here and there and now if we alt click on our mask and set it to overlay 
we are starting to get something, but right now it's way too dark, so we will go for like maybe 40, 35. Let's see how that looks. Now we get these edges. Now, obviously, this is way too many of them, so we can go to Grunge Scratches Rough and Scratch Masking, and we can get rid of some of the some of the dents. You see that it kind of like overlays it on top of our current map and we get a little bit of extra detail here and there. Okay, so, I mean, obviously we could tweak this for ages, but I think that just as a proof of concept, this is fine. I would add another fill, because like right now, it's still pretty, you know, you don't get very high noise areas and low noise areas, so I wanted to change that. You could do this with like maybe clouds, if you like clip them, so you get only some areas and then you would maybe multiply or overlay those. But I think that using grunge is uh, just offers a little bit more variation and it just, you know, it, it looks pretty natural. Yeah, I think the grunge map eight looks pretty good. Yeah, we can even keep this scale and we will overlay it on top and we will once again dial it, dial it down a little bit. You can tone down the scratches a little bit because I feel like they're way too prominent at the moment. So maybe go like 15. Maybe we can randomize it a little bit to get different seed. Yeah, I think this seed is way better because I, I what I didn't like was that we had some scratches that were like in the same direction in one spot. So we kind of got rid of that. Now, if you look at look at the edges, they have, you know, they got a little bit of that ZBrush quality that I would try, I would strive for if I kind of, you know, use just uh, trim th smooth border or some flattened brushes and a little bit of smoothing and maybe some noisy alpha here and there. So I think that it's quite nice that you can get that without having to do any manual labor. Now. Of course, as I mentioned several times, you can create loads of variation. This is just uh, something, you know, I quickly threw together to preview the workflow. But for instance, if you wanted to get more variation in the depth of the edge where you could just copy the layer, click on the click into mask and just go onto metal edgeware, randomize it, go into blur, blur it out more. Gra uh, randomize the purlin so you get different seed on the on the big mask and randomize the additional noises and now you get even more of the edgeware and it's kind of like more blended into the into the entire surface instead of being just on the edges Okay, so this will be it for uh, this uh, quick tip slash tutorial. Uh, I will not show you how to get it into Octane or whatever because it's just, you know, about exporting the texture and loading it into displacement. Uh, but once again, this is just the base. Uh, if you wanted to really tweak this, you would need to spend some time on figuring out the right scale, the right intensity. You would mask it out with more care for the details. Uh, you could also add maybe uh, scratches or something and overlay those on top of this so you would get like some variation in the size you would maybe get some like tiny dents tiny scratches uh, that way but we're not going to cover this here i just wanted to show you this kind of neat trick i actually i translated this from substance designer because you would use this to in for creating edgeware in textures and uh, i think it works even better in substance painter and i haven't seen anyone mentioning it before so yeah uh, this will be it and uh, see you in the next tutorial. Uh, if you enjoy this tutorial please hit the like button and subscribe. If you create anything amazing with this definitely hit me up, send me a DM or something or tag me and I will check it out and uh, you know give you some feedback on it. Okay see you guys, bye!